All right. Thank you, sir. Uh, my name is Eric Jackson, um, and uh, my company is Element 47. So it's a branding, marketing, and advertising agency. Um, I have been in the communications world for 35 years or so. Uh, I've got the gray hair to prove it. Um, I've been on the board of uh, American Marketing Association. And uh, so over the, the many years, um, I have had a, multiple mentors. Some of those relationships were formal. Most were informal, but what we're going to be talking about today is a formal mentor-mentee relationship. So we're going to cover what both sides of that look like. Um, and I'm going to uh, share with you guys uh, my screen. Uh, host disabled participant screen sharing. So I need to get that switched over for me. All right, go ahead and try it now. Oops. Okay, here we go. All right, this is basically the document that uh, that you all have access to. And I'm just going to walk through this briefly. Uh, and we're going to start with uh, how to be a great mentor. So um, a couple of things to think about. Um, number one is if you are someone's mentor, your job is not to fix their the mentee's problems. The mentee is going to come to you hopefully prepared and want they're going to want your life experience. And that's what, in my opinion, is going to give them the 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 most value. If you try to step in and actively fix problems for somebody else, that does not give them the opportunity to learn. And it also would require you to uh, have, you know, deep intimate knowledge of what all those circumstances that they're, they're in actually look like. And that's kind of exhausting. And it's really um, not, it doesn't help them learn. So uh, uh, ideally, you want to get as much information as you can in an informal setting, asking questions and listening patiently, as it says there. Uh, but don't try to fix their problems. Help them get to the information either through your experiences that you share or books or resources and uh, enable that person to your mentee to, to learn and grow. So the, uh, obviously the first thing that you want to do as uh, noted on the list here is help set mentee goals. So uh, hopefully if somebody signed up to be a mentee, they already have some sort of idea about what they want to achieve. And that may be a career goal, some new skill, um, maybe a career change, work for a different agency, you name it. Uh, help them figure out what it is that they want to get out of the relationship with you. And obviously, when the first time you're going to sit down, you're also going to want to have uh, an interaction with them and both of you tell your, your story. And we'll get to that uh, a little bit later. Um, my... Uh, the thing that, that I took me years to figure out was uh, number two on this list, listen patiently. You know, we always have that gut reaction that to jump in, to say things, to take over the conversation, you really want to let the person who's your mentee get it all out. Don't interrupt, let them keep going, maybe ask questions, but don't begin to give feedback until there's a, a clear stopping point. Um, and, I, and I use this in my own company when working with my leadership team or anybody else. There's a problem that comes up. There's a, an opportunity for somebody to create a solution. I always just say, well, what do you guys think? Because I, as the owner, I'm not going to have to be the one to implement it. I'm not the one who knows everything about what the problem is. I ask questions and I let everybody else speak first. And for, for, for me, that is what a, a good mentor does. Um, we talked a little bit about sharing experience uh, and giving advice. It is okay to give advice, but I always err on the side of uh, sharing experience. And I've used that uh, throughout my career. And especially uh, in the last 15 years, I learned that, that tactic from uh, being a member of EO Nashville. 
where, uh, you know, I have other business owners in this small group with me and we bring our problems to that group and ask for uh, help. And what, what happens in almost every uh, circumstance is I will present, tell the group what my problem is. Get, they'll ask clarifying questions. They listen intently. They think about what their experience has been. And if it's an HR problem or whatever, they'll go around the room and each person will tell me a story about a similar experience that they had and what their circumstances were and how it worked out. And what that enables uh, the person listening to do is to gain ideas from that. And sometimes there are people in the room in those uh, particular circumstances that take things away. They don't even tell anybody. I've been listening to somebody else give their experience to somebody who has a problem. And I've learned things that I didn't even uh, have never mentioned anybody that I took away from that experience. Next is uh, recommended tasks and resources. Uh, I think if you've got to a certain point in your career and you've read some great books, things that have really changed your mindset, helped you in your career, uh, you can certainly uh, recommend things like that, that that other people should read. Probably the number one that um, I recommend to people with regard to purpose and uh, culture in business is Start With Why. It is uh, just one of those foundational books that have really helped me understand how to grow and, and cultivate the culture within my organization. And it really helped me understand what role I needed to be playing in my own company. Uh, so again, be, uh, be open with uh, giving resources, uh, making introductions, uh, those sorts of things can really take somebody down uh, a good path. And you can also, if you know a lot about that, that particular resource or you assign them a task, you know, kind of make that a, a requirement. Um, you know, you don't want to just do everything for your mentee. You really want them to do the work. So maybe you tell them, hey, uh, when you come back to me next time, I want you to have uh, read this book and maybe written down five things that you got from it. And let's talk about how, what that means to you. Um, be available and responsive as well. So, you know, questions may come up between meetings and you want that person to be able to, to reach out to you and ask questions. Uh, make sure that you determine what that best channel should be. So if it's email for you, it could be text message, it could be phone call, just make sure that you've agreed uh, on, on what that will actually look like. Um, next, res respect confidentiality. Obviously, in order for this to work, you really need to have the assurance uh, as a, uh, a mentee that the things that you reveal to your mentor are not going to be revealed to anyone else. Um, you know, the, the buck stops there. You want to make sure that both as mentor and mentee that um, you don't talk about things that are confidential. Now, there are times where I will tell a mentee a story and I will let them know, hey, if you want to repeat this, feel free to. Uh, but make sure that you establish those boundaries and and uh, make sure that both parties understand it. And I even make it a good, it's a good practice to mention that at the beginning of each meeting. Say, hey, I, we're in a confidential environment here. I want you to know that what what's said here stays here. Let's open up and get the most out of this time that we have together. Um, encouraging independence. Uh, again, that's where this is all headed, right? You're not going to be by this person's side guiding them uh, through whatever it is that they're trying to achieve. You want to, to make sure that uh, the, the information, the knowledge, the expertise that they're gaining from you is something that they can use independently of you being there. And then inspire confidence. You know, uh, I know I still have those thoughts that I'm not good enough. I'm not smart enough. I don't have the ability to, to do hard things. And uh, we all need a pep talk from time to time. As a matter of fact, one of our new clients uh, told us how, how much they had enjoyed working with us when they were in town for two days and how great the team was. And the first thing I said was, can, can you repeat that? We just don't really get that enough. <laughs> we really love to hear it. So does anybody have any questions so far on, on what it looks like to be a mentor, a great mentor? All right. 
uh, feel free to email me also if uh, no, and I, I think my email may be available. I can give that to you guys at the end here. Um, let's see here. Oop, going a little too far. There are uh, checklists for each of these things. Uh, I'm making a mess of this. How to be a great mentor, how to be a great mentee. Um, so feel free to use these checklists as well. They're kind of... Uh, the, the, the details of what I've been talking about from a high level. Um, how many mentees we got out there? Several, I'm sure, right? So excellent, Aaron, I see you. I can only see a few people. Um, coming into this, number one, set your goals. That's what we talked about as a mentor. They're gonna wanna see what your goals are. What are you trying to achieve? You're trying to get to a, the next level of your career. You're trying to learn a new skill, whatever it happens to be, make sure that you understand what that is and can communicate what that looks like, what that feels like to you, what it means to you. That way the mentor can uh, have some emotion behind it. And maybe there is some emotion. Again, going back to the EO experience, when we're doing presentations to our, our small group, uh, the thing that we lead with is how this problem makes us feel. Um, if, if I am uh, terrified and I express that to everybody else in the, the room, that kind of puts them in the same space as me. They understand where I am and maybe takes them back to a time when they had a similar experience. And it's okay to, to, to talk about those emotions. Uh, be, be open about your needs. What are your expectations? What are your aspirations? What, what would you like this relationship to, to look like? Where would you like to be in a year from now after having this mentorship relationship. Please, ex please express those things. Um, come to each meeting with uh, an agenda. What are the things that you want to talk about? What are things maybe from the last session that you have struggled with? Where have you had successes? You want to report on those things to your uh, mentor so they can celebrate with you. For example, oddly enough, my next door neighbor owned an agency for about 40 years. He's 82 or 83 years old now. I uh, still go next door, smoke cigars with him. It's a very informal mentor-mentee relationship. I've made very big decisions about how I'm going to lead my company. And uh, I saw him in the yard the other day and told him that we had uh, gotten our biggest client ever. And this is the client that was bragging on us the other day. And this big smile came over his face and he was just really pumped up about that. So I know mentors like to hear when their mentees have great success. Uh, it just it justifies why, why we do this work. Uh, take responsibility of your own learning. Uh, obviously, it's kind of like college, right? Every hour in class, you're supposed to spend three hours studying uh, even more so with this. You're going to need to really put time and effort into it. You're not going to be able to just spend an hour with a mentee or a, men, uh, a mentor and get a you know a, a tractor beam that comes out of your mentor's head and fixes all your problems. You're going to have to put some work into actually learning and growing. Uh, so make sure that you you put aside the time to do that. And that's how we meet goals, right? Goals don't just happen. This is probably why New Year's resolutions don't work so well. We put them. We don't make time for those things in our week. So make sure that you've got some time to, to read, to, to learn, to go out and do the things necessary to, to, to grow. Um, also be available and, and responsive. If, uh, you know, if your mentor calls you, emails you, make sure that you, you respond. Uh, maybe there's something that you can teach them. And I know that every mentor-mentee relationship I've had, I've learned things from my mentee. Um, he would never admit it publicly, but I'm going to say it anyway. But Greg Bowling, who's the CEO of GSNF, he and I went to high school together. He's a couple of years older than me. Uh, certainly got a bigger organization that he runs than I do. And uh, he's, he's, he's uh, begrudgingly admitted that he has learned some things from me as well. And I've learned a tremendous amount of things from him. Uh, if you don't know him, he's a horrible individual. Uh, not trustworthy. No, I'm just kidding. Um, Hopefully, hopefully he's not on here. He was on one of these once. Um, let's see. Uh, heed mentors' uh, experience and advice. Uh, don't be defensive. You know, a couple of times my mentors have told me things that I didn't want to hear. And um, 
just kind of sit in whatever it is that they give to you for a moment and consider it and maybe go out and study it and maybe do some research. Uh, I told my next door neighbor, uh, Tom, that I really wanted to hire a business development person and I didn't want to do that work anymore. And he laughed and said, you're never going to get away from this. You're either going to have to get comfortable with it. You're the face of the company. You're just going to have to live with it. And it really made me uh, change the way that I was doing business. Now, I hired somebody to do the, the closing of deals. I'm just the, the the first step in the process. I'm more business development and less sales. But it really uh, made me realize that there are certain things that I wasn't going to be able to get get around. So, so listen intently and uh, let it soak in, and don't don't rush to judgment. And then ask questions too. I mean, if some if your mentee um, gives you some experience or maybe some advice, and it doesn't uh, doesn't work for you, push back. You know, uh, it's it's time to ask questions. And maybe the mentee or the mentor doesn't completely understand your situation and needs to need some more information. It's a it's a two way street. Feel free to to uh, question. Uh, develop trust. Um, again, you know, if your mentor is telling you some things that maybe are not for public consumption, you, you need to honor that. You don't want, especially in a town like Nashville, uh, you know, it's a, it's a small town, especially in our industry. So make sure that you honor that relationship. Um, and don't ask for a job. That's not what the uh, mentor is there for. Uh, if a job comes out of it, great. But, you know, it's not it's not a uh, a transactional relationship, if you will. And then, of course, learn and have fun. Um, you know, I, I still have good relationships with everybody that has mentored me or that I've mentored. Uh, one of my dearest friends uh, was a, a mentee of mine a few years ago. And now we uh, talk on a regular basis. And uh, he, he actually... Uh, might be a customer of mine soon. He actually reached out to us the other day and, and um, asked. And so that's a, you know, that's a, that's a big honor. But again, not, not what I, not what I got into it for. So again, any questions so far? I know we're running really quickly and we've only got a couple minutes left, but I'm happy to take any questions. Again, this, this resource, this is a software system, Mentor Loop, that's designed to manage, uh, mentor mentee relationships through software. Um, one of my favorite uh, things to do as an entrepreneur is to uh, do R and D it's a rip off and duplicate. So I basically just stole this information and I'm providing it to you. It's great checklists. We're not using this software uh, at least at this point, but this is a great framework. If you're ever wondering where you are, what you need to do next, you know, feel free to, to, to come back to this document and use it as a guide. Um, and you can see here the goal setting framework. Again, I'm not going to go through this. There's not time, but read through it and use this as a, uh, a great resource. And then of course the, the power of goal setting. Um, these are, uh, and, and that's, you know, another thing that I think uh, if you're a mentee, it's great to ask your mentor, how do you set goals? Um, mine are more of intentions for the year. Here are the things, uh, the direction I'm headed. These are the, the things that I'm uh, going to do more of, the things I'm going to do less of. Uh, I do have some KPIs typically that I want to hit. Like, for example, uh, for the last 30 weeks, this is personal. Um, I've worked out every day. Uh, that may be... Uh, you know, a 10 minute uh, yoga session via Peloton, but every single day of my life, I intend to exercise whether I'm hurt or sick or whatever. Um, and that, you know, the same kind of thing goes for work. Maybe it's reading 10 pages in a book or uh, writing one blog post a week. And again, make sure you're setting aside time for those things. So um, I know that was a lot of information, a lot of me talking, uh, happy to take any questions, concerns, uh, whatever you got. So uh, for the mentee program, will it be like one-on-one, -on -one, like one mentor, one mentee, or will it be like several mentees, one mentor? It's designed to be one-on-one -on -one and, and uh, the staff will uh, be, and, and those haven't, uh, I don't think those those uh, pairings have happened yet, 
uh, but or maybe they have. I don't know. But you'll you'll get a, an assignment. Okay. Eric, this is Michael. No, the the pairings haven't happened yet. And Aaron, that's a great question. Yeah, you're Eric's absolutely correct. It's one on one. Um, just as an FYI, I'm I'm one of the mentors in the AMA program. I'm going into my third year as a mentor, and um, I've had two mentees, and we we meet one on one uh, once per month. But it's really up to the mentor and the mentee, the cadence, how frequently they want to connect. And it doesn't have to be in person. It could be you know Zoom, uh, whatever's comfortable, phone. But I, I certainly have been available uh, in person, and that's been what has worked well. Uh, for me. And when we do the matching last year, I helped co-lead the program with Diane Watson, who is a, an executive coach. We're handing the reins over to someone else to do the pairing this year. Uh, Kayla will be involved, but Seth Temko, who, who worked with me on the, on the CMO club in Nashville, he'll be involved in that pairing. And, you know, we look at the backgrounds of the mentees and the mentors and try to find what looks like a pretty good match. But one other thing, Eric, I'll just add is on the mentee side, because there may be more potential mentees than mentors on this particular um, call. Mm -hmm. If something happens with your schedule uh, that is going to create a conflict with perhaps what you've organized with your mentor, I mean that mm -hmm. that's fine. I mean don't don't be gun shy about over communicating to them. Of uh, the mentors and mentees we put together for 2023, we only had one mentee actually that kind of went radio silent, which was a little bit lumpy. I didn't I didn't um, you know I didn't love the fact that someone did end up going radio silent. But if something comes up with your schedule, you need to. Adjust. I mean, the mentor is not going to be offended in any way, shape, or form because the mentor wants to make this work for you based on what's convenient for your life and your schedule. I'll hit the pause button there. Michael, you okay. have done a great job of uh, making these pairings. You know, a lot of work goes into it. I've been involved in it in the past. And they they really do go into backgrounds and make sure that uh, the best possible pairing uh, happens. Other questions? Okay. Well, um, again, uh, my my email address, if you would like it, is ej, that's E and J, ej at element 47, the number 47, dot co. ej at element 47, dot co. Be happy to... Uh, to talk via email. And if, uh, if we need to schedule a call, happy to do that too, uh, to talk about the, the mentor-mentee relationship. And uh, I, hope, I hope you're all going to have a, uh, a wonderful time doing this. And I know it has uh, really given me a lot of personal value, professionally, personally, to have mentors and mentees. So I wish you the best. And, and hopefully if you're a mentee, uh, you're going to get a lot out of this, and it's also going to drive you to hopefully be someone's mentor uh, later in life or whenever you're ready. Uh, it's never too soon. Yeah. Thank you, Eric. Um, I did drop your uh, email in the chat. So as long as the Zoom window is open, go ahead and copy it out of there into um, a Word document or your email or however you want to uh, store that. Um, I know writing email addresses down sometimes gets a little bit uh, precarious. Um yeah. But uh, yeah, the uh, applications do close, uh, just like housekeeping, the applications do close this Friday. Um, we will um, we'll be doing our pairings sometime after that. Um, and then everyone who uh, like everyone who applies will be reached out to um, thereafter. Um, we haven't set our, our meeting yet for um, uh, doing the pairings and whatnot. So uh, it'll probably, it may be about a month or so before we, we get all that done, but we'll get it done as expeditiously as we can. Um, and, uh, the, uh, it, I, I assume that if everyone's on here, they've uh, already had some time to look at the, um, uh, to look at the, um, our website for our, our pages on this. Mm -hmm. Um, the, the one prerequisite is like, this is a, uh, an offering that the organization puts on for AMA members. So if you're not a member yet, that is the one, uh, prerequisite. Otherwise it's a free program, um, for anyone that's, uh, that wants to be a part. Um, and, uh, to answer, uh, the question in the chat, um, prior experience is not, is not required. Um, this is as much to get started as it is to continue and to grow. Um, so, it, uh, yeah, that's not a, not a barrier at all, but, um, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, close off our, our recording here.
Um, and uh, if anyone has any questions or whatnot, uh, feel free to reach out to the to uh, the AMA organization um, uh, or uh, Eric as well. Um, we'll be ready and happy to uh, answer any questions that you may have or help, help facilitate um, what we can. Uh, with that, thank you all for joining us and uh, hope you have a great rest of your day and hope you apply by Friday. Thank you.